AP Gov B Day Herman Hines. Search AP Gov Herman High B Day. Yes. Instead of searching cancer. Type that, you'll find out why. Oh, whoa, we're like, yo, dude, it's like right there. Like, how much? I'm not a like, dude, I don't know how much. Okay, so what you will see is you will see a live feed to my classroom. Like you are a student sitting in my classroom. This is what you will be able to do with the blended hybrid. Meaning, if you can't make the class because grandma, grandpa, brother, uncle Tommy is sick, or if you don't feel comfortable with going to class, you will do the blended hybrid will sign the disclosure saying that I am not liable for you. Do I want you in class? I would love to have you in class, but are you? If you're not, I totally understand. I get it. The live stream is you can go to class during class time and be able to watch class at home. You'll even be able to participate because I'm going to have a TA sit back there and moderate comments and ask questions for you. So if you post a comment on there, my TA can raise their hand and say, Mr. Jensen, um, yes. Okay. Any questions on this? Yes. Um, uh, just search on my channel. If you subscribe to my channel. <laughs> if you click so subscribe at the bottom of the bell. If you turn on notifications, it'll tell you when it goes live. Okay, so today we're going to talk about so we're going to talk about what is good government. Can anyone tell me what government is? Can anyone tell me what government is? No one. You guys are taking AP Gov, a social contract. Social contract, okay? A hierarchy. A structure. A structure, okay? It provides organization to allow like um, greater safety or greater organization of like ideas, I guess. So an exchange of ideas, philosophies. What about crime? What about punishment? What does government do with that? You can administer justice and decide what's just, what is just. What is just, what is unjust? We can create laws, we can pass policy, we can create punishment if you break those laws. All of these are what government is. So what makes good government? We're going to pass the buck. You go first. Oh, uh, what makes a good yes. Oh, well, protect rights of the people. Protect rights of the people. I like. Pass the buck. What makes good government? Protect rights is fair. This is a terrible, terrible matter. Okay, what else? Pass the buck. Pass the buck. Pass the buck. Three, two, one. What is good government? What is the quality of a good government? Um, I would say like input from the people. Input. Okay, input from the people. Organize. Ooh, organize. Now we can shout at me. 
Uh, three of corruption. Mm. Three of corruption. Unbiased. Legal. Okay, what else? What else? What else? Juan, I need two more. Two more, two more, two more. Two more. Over here. Easy to learn. Easy to learn. <laughs> I will tell you, American democracy is not. Capitalist. Yes. Whoa. Whoa. Why capitalist? Why capitalist? Free market, free people. Free market, free people. Okay. Are you Adaptable. Adaptable. It will change. Adoptable and adaptable are the same thing because you're adoptable and adaptable. And you adopt a new stuff. And you adapt it. Wow. Yes, yeah, go. Helps the needs of people. Ooh, meets the needs of people. You're crazy, bro. <laughs> what kind of needs? Like what you need to survive. Oh, no, 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 no. Hierarchy. Tell me about the hierarchy. Tell me about the hierarchy. Who's hierarchy? Class. Um, Pavlos is from hierarchy. You need food. Oh, yeah, that's right. You need shelter. Uh, water. water. Someone say Xbox or Simpson. That's on there. Then. Protection? Protection. Protection and safety. <laughs> a government needs to be able to meet the needs of the people. What are those needs? The basic needs of the people. All the other recreational stuff is just fluff. Okay? Next question. Yeah, go on. Healthcare. Healthcare? Oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, <mommies. laughs> Could that be protection? Could that be protection? Yes. Healthcare would work. Did you just say you supported it? Did you say construction? Or infrastructure. Good. Taxes. Infrastructure. No, stop. <laughs> okay, I will say roads. Roads are good. Roads are good. Man, got a little realm in their roads. Okay. Privacy. Privacy. Yes. Yes. Isolation is <laughs> accessible education. Being able to teach this makes good government. All of these ideas are phenomenal because this is what makes good government. Are all of these ideas legal sister legal system? <laughs> As you can tell, I have terrible handwriting. Um, Yes, Matt, you said health, no health care, and you call everybody comments. <laughs> Tell me why. Okay. Taxes. Okay, taxes. The more and more social programs you have, yes, the more money you have to be taken away from the citizen to fund it. I don't want to pay for a social contract. It should be voluntary. <laughs> yes. However, if you get uh, health care paid from the government, then you are spending your own money to replace your own. Ooh, counter argument. It's a buck for a buck. But would the um, health care necessarily be as good or as luxurious as you could if you had the money? Do you know how many democracies have universal health care? Like all but ours, I think. We have universal. We have a voluntary. And all of them, I guess. About 98%. But it's, it's, there is a debate over Obamacare, right? And the reason there is a debate over Obamacare isn't because of universal health care in a sense, but because of the high price of another term that you used. 
capitalism. Supply and demand. Insulin last year went up to $200 a shot. Paid $200 for a needle of insulin. Someone was to have an allergic reaction, it would cost $200. That price jumped overnight from $30 to $200. Is that because of universal health care? Wait, insulin's not allergic reaction, is it? It's a blood sugar. Diabetes. Whatever. Whatever. Diabetes. Yeah. Yeah. Diabetes. I said insulin, and it wasn't insulin, it was happy pen. It was an happy pen. So the concept is right, the terminology. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. That's because of capitalism. Because there was a higher supply of insulin because the manufacturers could have produced it fast enough, so there was more there was less supply. So in turn, that because it took eight push for me. What does that mean? That means that there's lower supply lower supply, demand will be higher, which goes up. Exactly. Price goes up. That's a capitalist idea. In a universal health care system, a true universal health care system, what happens to that price? Rises with inflation. What's that say? It's stuck. So I was going to say, didn't the dude that, <clears throat> didn't the reason that the epipen went up so much is because he didn't have the other monopoly on everything? And wouldn't that be the answer? Copyright laws. Which are capitalist. Uh, a monopoly is anti capitalist. That's why we have antitrust in place, but we don't use it. So, in a sense, we don't use it. You're right. Yeah. Give me an example of a monopoly in Utah. Oh, oh small. Yeah. Close. Larry H. Miller. No. <laughs> What's a monopoly in Utah? The biggest monopoly in Utah. Yeah. Gas. Natural gas. Where do you get propane from? Or where, where do you get natural gas from? The burn up. Which is supplied by who? Presto. Which is about the mountain. But it's all, it's monopoly. You're right, we don't have it. We say we have monopoly laws and antitrust laws, but in fact, we don't practice those. Yeah. And a lot of that goes to interest groups and, and whole other story, which we will talk about later in the semester. And lobbying and all the fun stuff that goes into politics. But capitalism is a great idea. It is. It's a phenomenon. I'm not like Bash Young. I love capitalism. I, I'm a big believer in the American dream. And I love eating cup up. <laughs> Why do I like eating cup up? Why do I use that as an example of capitalism? <laughs> it is. Or Students that are going to Newmont University <coughs> from South Korea. They start cooking out of their apartment. Um, invited people over, people liked it. I'm like, you should take this down to the Salt Lake Creek Festival. <coughs> they did. You made a boatload of money. So, like, hey, let's get a truck and just visit around Salt Lake. They did. Then five years, it turned into a multi-million dollar company. They now have a restaurant. They have a fleet of trucks, more than one restaurant. But that is the American dream. An immigrant coming to the United States and doing so successful. On average, it's very unlikely that will happen. But we still say that's the American dream, even though 5% of all companies all restaurant companies actually are still around after about 10 years. Um, these are great. Let's talk about the US democracy, American democracy. What do we have? Protections on rights? Explain. That's like a bill of rights. And the Bill of Rights writes, like, what are they? They're liberties. They're civil liberties. Yeah. But go ahead. Then we call them rights. Rights and liberties. Other amendments to the Constitution specifically deal with those. Women's rights vote? Yeah. Okay. And 
anti-slavery, anti-Jim Crow laws. So your protection rights. What else? Are we fair in the United States? Trial. What was that? Fair trial. You're going to love this class. Okay. Yes. Fair, fair and equal trial. Turn a blind eye. Judgment. What else? We have a legal system. We have a legal system. Most democracies have a legal system. Most countries, most governments have a legal system. Uh, what else? Input from the people. Can we change laws? Can we change policy? Yes. Okay. Are we organized? Yes. Bureaucracy 101. Over organized. Okay. Are we free from corruption? No. Or is any government free from corruption? No. Why? Money, Money and power. Evil. Men are inherently evil. When I say men, I actually include women. Because 1920s, the 19th Amendment, you guys, yeah, I'm ready to vote so I can include you. But, <laughs> what's the anniversary? Did you guys know that? 100 year anniversary of the women's rights vote. Pretty cool. Uh, healthcare, do we have a universal healthcare? Technically, do we have a healthcare system? Is it flawed in a sense? You guys are going to actually meet my wife because she comes and talks about this. In terms of Medicaid and Medicare, she is uber smart when it comes to that. I'm not. She's a compliance director for you. Unbiased. Is our government unbiased? No. no. Why? How? Parties. Parties. They're biased towards themselves. I like that comment. Party. Parties. In order for someone to run, they express their own ideas about how it should be run and just by nature of that is political parties or just that people have different ideas, there will be biases somewhere towards different ideas. Okay. Maybe towards an agenda to a certain group of individuals, to a policy, to a right. Okay. American democracy is not. <laughs> Why do I say it's not easy to learn? We have one class, one class, and you guys are supposed to go out and be able to vote. Good job. And if you're a regular student, not an AP, guess what? You get three months to learn our entire system. This is why you hear radio ads that say, what kind of democracy are we? We're a republic. <laughs> My keister are we a republic. We are not a republic. We are not a true democracy. We are the American democracy. One of a kind. <laughs> adaptable. Is the American democracy adaptable? Is the US Constitution adaptable? It is. We have amendments. Okay, we can amend the Constitution. It is very difficult because of the rise of biasness. It can be interpreted through the Supreme Court. One of the most important Supreme Court cases of your lifetime happened in 2006 when Jensen was a senior in high school. You know what case that was? He's like, one minute, I'll find it. <laughs> I got it. Well, Burger Feld v. Hodges, the marriage. It actually had to do with insurance premiums. Did you know that? Yeah. I'll tell you the lowdown, the basic, quick version of well, Burger Feld v. Hodges, and it had to do with individual rights, specifically with the 14th Amendment. The right. But no states could really take away any life, liberty, or property from the citizens. Insurance now becomes liberty and property. Two individuals, and it was a pile of different cases, but two individuals um, were married in a different state where they recognized um, homosexual marriage. One of them had died 
The other one went to collect the insurance premium because he never worked. His partner had supported him his whole life. And the bank said, we don't have to do this because we don't recognize your marriage. Even though they had been married for years. Pretty much, he's bankrolled. Is the bank taking away well, that individual's life and liberty? Yes. Uh, it passed in a five to four decision. Very close. The, using the 14th Amendment, uh, specifically the due process clause, that no state can deprive any of its citizens of life, liberty, and property without due process of law. So we are adaptable. We change. Would that case have passed 20 years ago? Why? Different culture, different ideas. Are we seeing a political shift today? Yes. How? How are we seeing a political shift? What's going on? People are like opening up. People are opening up. Yes. Gen Z is being introduced to the political system. I like that. I do. Do you know there are more of you? than anybody in history, more 18 to 27 year olds, than any time in history. Political campaigns, policy, everything is motivated to what you want. And Congress are trying to jump on board with their ideas, but still get input from their constituents, still get ideas from their constituents. Constituents meaning voters. Medical marijuana, is this a policy? change? I think this would have passed 20 years ago. Especially in the city of Utah. Uber, Uber concerned. We were one of the first states. Policy is changing because of the American people. The American 20 years ago is not the same American today. We have more interest groups. We have more minority groups. Are schools different within the same county? If you go to Kearns High School, it would look a lot different. Paramount High is predominantly white. I think it's like 5% of all students at Paramount High are a minority. You go over to Kearns, you drive 20 miles, and it's about 40%, 50%. Social dynamics change, economic status changes. So policy must try to keep up. Ideas and policy needs to keep up. So a government or good government needs to be adaptable. It needs to be able to teach the people. I mentioned earlier about one year course of government. My opinion, US government, you should take all four years of high school. More important than that, in my opinion. Because you can change society. You can change the outcome. You can change the way policy is in here. Government has tackled harder problems than any other subject area. I think math has ever gotten rid of race, race problems. Math got rid of. Math class is desegregated. Go ahead. So schools, like in the whole, they say the whole purpose of general education is to make it better for the kids, right? So then why do we have more classes for everyone when you could go to specific careers? That's a good choice. That's a good that's a good question. Rather than like government, which you know specifically during the eighties during the Reagan administration. They did a IQ test of seniors graduating high school, and it was below 100 nationwide. The average was below 100. You had a bunch of classes they didn't need. You had like a TV class, because you go and watch TV. You'd have all these different classes. So there was a fight towards education, this fight you see during the Clinton administration, too, with Common Core education as well, or No Child Left Behind education. You see it during the Obama administration with the Common Core agenda, where all states, all institutions would follow the same basic outline when it comes to primary school. 
in secondary school. We are far behind other countries when it comes to education. And those stats are kind of padded because we don't just test the elite, like most countries like China and all these other countries do. We don't test the smartest kids. We test everybody. Because we feel American ideology should be shared. Education should be shared. And education should be free. But no free lunch. It goes along with the idea of capitalism. If you want something in life, you got to go and get it. And sometimes we can come by us. Two main ideas motivate American democracy. One is popular sovereignty. The other is social contract. Please alleviate on social contract. I know we talked about it earlier, but please alleviate on that idea. What is social contract? Change of rights for protections. How many of you have a phone? So, how many of you understand what that phone is about? I've read the terms and service. None of you? Have I posted this question to you before? No. What if I told you? That, that Facebook, that Snapchat, that Insta Tana, whatever. TikTok has access and uses that information. Your location can access your phone calls, can access your recording device, can see your pictures, know your web history, know everything about you to market to you specific ads. They're to the point where they even know what you're thinking. They're so good. They're analytics. Campaigns have been won by this. The Trump administration won a campaign based off this idea and specific advertising towards your political agenda. You might say, I hate public lands. You will get ads for that, that individual that pushes the idea of getting rid of public lands. Campaigns have been motivated off this idea. And you have allowed it because those terms and conditions, you didn't read, you clicked OK. You gave access to a third party to know everything about you, to take your privacy away. You can't live off the grid anymore. It's impossible. That's scary that, camp, that organizations can do that, right? What if I said government can do that too? Specifically, the US government can do that. They don't need a warrant to get through that. Yes. In a time of fear, Congress passed unanimously, a couple people voted no, the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act does is it gives your information to the U.S. government. It's scary, right? Now we're going to use that with voting, motivating society to an agenda. Then media comes in. They can play a role. They can push their own agenda. For you are influenced. We mold the political ideology of the uneducated to be educated on our agenda. That's why I think government is more than one year course. Questions so far? This exchange of rights for protection in the Patriot Act, we gave up the right of privacy. In exchange, what did we receive? Terrorism. Safety. Or terrorism protection. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> we receive that. Okay? We have the right to say whatever I want to say. Can I walk into a classroom and say whatever I want to say? You have a choice. Good. Lots of conflicting ideas. I like this. Okay, so right here, 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 and there. Everywhere. Go. Okay. Same thing. You technically do anything, so you have an infinite amount of choices you can do. So you can say anything you like. You wanted to keep your job. Yes. <laughs> I jam on a fire line. <laughs> <laughs> I do the Mark Arena on that line. Like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, but there's always consequences to these rights. What rights do you really have? That freedom of speech, the freedom of petition to write, to, to protest downtown. These are all individual rights. Now, could I get arrested? Maybe. Is that a consequence? Yes. But the other consequence, if I don't, that can motivate society. That can make a change. Martin Luther King marched on Washington. What consequence did he face? Assassination. Assassination. Being arrested. He was arrested in Birmingham, Alabama. You guys are going to learn about the of Birmingham. But that's a consequence of the action. We do have rights, and those rights are defined by who? Who defines the rights? But can we change government? What about medical marijuana? People thought, I mean, people have, thought they had the right to smoke marijuana. They were being arrested. Now, do they have the right to do that legally? Yes. Your rights are defined by culture, by society, by policy. They can only be defined by the government. Government is a way that the people use, it's an avenue that people use to control itself. Because men are inherently evil. So we have to put guidelines on the evilness we're willing to go. You're right. Not everybody agrees. There can't be light without darkness. There not. There can't. Martin Luther King, he was so important because his marches on Washington. Do you think Congress, do you think government would have understood Martin Luther King without Martin Luther King? No. Because that's the darkness, right? You can't have light without darkness. Thomas Jefferson was a very big believer of violent protests. A quote from one of his papers that he or letters that he had written to Madison while he was serving as ambassador to France. A little bit of Destruction is needed to keep the light of democracy burnt. Ha <laughs> ha! During the Constitutional Convention, where do you think Jefferson was? In France. After he signed the Declaration, he went to France. What was he doing in France? He was starting a revolution. Off with their heads! You see the but unlike Jefferson, you had Madison. And when drafting the US Constitution, he had these questions. What is government? What is good government? So Madison took the peace for it. He researched. Madison was a historian by nature. And he looked to some of the early political philosophers. Who did he look to? John Locke. Montesquieu. 
result. <laughs> Not result L, I don't know how to spell result. He looked to these philosophers and he read John Locke's second treatise and he, there's a passage on it that he took. Life, liberty, and property. He took this passage and it influenced American democracy. Jefferson used this idea of life, liberty, and property. We'll get to that in a second. But specifically life, liberty, and property or the idea that these are basic human rights. The right to life, the right to liberty, and the right to property. Madison used it in the due process clause of the U.S. Constitution. After the Constitutional Convention, Madison wrote with others a series of papers, the Federalist Papers, for adoption, trying to persuade the American people to adopt, and local legis uh, and state legislatures to adopt the U.S. Constitution. Specifically in Federalist 10 and Fed 51. Two required documents. One key idea comes out. The rise and prevention of the second biggest step forward in government, factions. What a faction is, is a group of individuals who become so powerful in their motivation that they actually sway the American people. They sway public opinion. Okay, political parties. What interest groups? Planned Parenthood, the NRA. Are these factions? Antifa. All right. The IRS. IRS. Pay taxes? Yes. <laughs> cool. You oh, that was like a bus coming at me right there. I'm like, what? No, I think it was, it was the other one where it's like, if you make too much money, they'll contact you. And like, um, what is it called? Audit, uh, auditing. Um, that's just a government agency. That's actually the executive branch. Oh. Uh, True. I like the IRS. Oh, they get taxes. <laughs> How do I get paid as an educator? Taxes. So I like the IRS. And the only reason I like it is because I'm an employee of the executive branch. My boss is boss is boss is boss is boss. It's Donald Trump. That's my boss. So of course I like the IRS. But know that that's part of the executive branch. It's actually a bureaucracy. It has to go with organization. But I like that. A, a faction, think of a faction as this way. A faction is a majority of people with a common idea. Yes. Yes. Yes, religion can be a faction. BLM? That goes back to organization because BLM is part of a state agency, so it's part of the bureaucracy. But good. Um, I have so many good questions, and I could like go off squirrel brain, but I don't want to. Just yet. Uh, we have a whole year to do something. Yes, and I can't teach you everything in one day. Um, factions become so powerful that they become uncontrollable, and then they become inherently evil over time. Because if you push the ideas of the majority and you push the policy and the motivations of the majority, who gets left out? 
the minorities. The segregation, a faction idea? Yes. Thomas Jefferson, like I said before, he stole this idea from Locke as well, but he altered it in his third draft. His first two drafts of the Declaration of Independence included the term life, liberty, and property. In the third draft, it was life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Okay? Why did he change that? It has to do with factions. I can't remember. This might probably be wrong. Uh, uh, didn't they want to like, have slaves be able to vote, but they would commit all mine because they were slaves? They could be from the South and have more votes for different groups. You are so close. <laughs> you are so close. Um, Slavery, slaves were considered property at that time. Okay? And the idea that you need to have slaves to be an American citizen, what agenda would this push? Pro slavery. Which was at that time what? A faction. A faction. Pro slavery was a faction. That was a common idea. It was a minority of people who did it, who were anti-slavery. He changed this idea from property because it was a fire. It was a fire that lit the conversation that the Americans should be anti-slavery. When he said life, liberty, and property, this didn't apply to slaves. Because women were also considered property at this time. You had to be a landowner, you had to be a male, to pretty much become an American citizen. All men are created equal. Well, only the ones that are landowners. So it changed that idea. This was a fire towards anti slavery. Now, Jefferson was a slave owner and was from Virginia. A pro slave state. But a lot of this has to go with his personal life, his relationships with his slaves, or inappropriate relationships. Anti slavery was a faction, and Jefferson understood that concept. Madison only applied it, and he wrote it, wrote about it, to make it towards more understandable for people to get. Think about this one. How did Germany rise? How did Hitler rise to power? Okay, World War One. All of your answers are correct. How I told you before how we're on the fringe of change and policy of ideas of political nature. We are right now in America. We are. That's what happened in Germany after World War One. After World War One, Germany faced a lot of repercussions because of what they did, because of the use of gas, because of the use of how they conducted war. They had ma major repercussions. And the people looked at it, it was the Germans didn't really want to fight in that war. Did you know that? The German people didn't want to fight. Why did they? Why did Germany get involved? Yes. Austria, Hungary. Who had the alliance? Well, Germany and Austria Hungary had their alliance. Okay, Germany and Austria had the alliance, but who specifically? 
What kind of government concept is it? What is a monarchy? The Kaisers. The reason they had that alliance is because they were related to their cousin. It was a family tie. The German people were sent to war to send to this atrocity, sent to this new type of war, where war was not glorious anymore. They were sent to die, and they didn't come home and it's a glorious celebration like they had in the past. The nature of war had changed, and the people blamed the Kaiser for this. So they started a revolution. They overthrew the government. They created a democracy. Americans have a democracy. It's good. Let's try that. They created a democracy. Unemployment dropped hard. People began to go to work. Industry rose. The country became great again. Would that sound good? It gave rise to an individual who representing the common man, the working class. The soldier who was wounded in battle. Who was charismatic, could voice his opinion, had a perfect record. His life was not filled with indecencies. He was a perfect German. And he motivated the people, the German people. He motivated them. And he pushed his ideology. He pushed his agenda. And all of a sudden, the economy was doing so great, and it started to fall. Unemployment started to rise. Banking, industries were proposing. The franc, the German money, exploded. What I mean by exploded, what I mean. Inflation. Inflation. It became big, 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 big. So who did this new individual blame? He blamed a race. He blamed an agenda. You're not one of us. You're against us. He created a mindset. He educated this mindset. And he pushed this agenda. Does it sound like a faction? To the point where it became evil, to where we start punishing and we voted on policy that was okay and it was acceptable to punish these individuals who had done this atrocities. And everybody accepted it. Pushed by what philosophy? What effort? Fashions. Factions become so strong, they collapse. And Madison wrote about this in 1051. 200 years before Hitler, he understood that consequence. Think of Rome, the Roman Empire. Why was Rome so successful? Can anyone tell me? Why was the Romans so successful? How did they get those big armies? Um, did they take it in? They like they of course. They inspired. We conquer your land. We conquer your oppressive government who has made you eat terrible food, has made you starve. We've conquered them. Now you are Roman. You will get money every day. You will get food supply every day. We will build infrastructure in your city, and it expanded, and expanded. That's why the term all roads lead to Rome, because they're phenomenal at infrastructure. They're phenomenal at how they ran their government. Early Roman government was a republic where elected individuals would serve for certain territories. So now they had a voice. These, these countries that were ran by monarchy or ran by uh, religious factions are now being, they have a voice. It became so strong until your later emperors became what? What happens to all factions? 
become corrupt, where Caesar's became corrupt. Did it all the way into northern Europe. Fought my ancestors. Who were tribal barbarians. That's the idea. Factions are evil in nature. And there's rise to factions that I'm going to post a question. We're going to play past the buck again. And I want you to think about a question. Should we dissolve the death penalty? Why? Because there's some crimes that just deserve it. They should be seriously looked at before it's put into effect. But not how we do it for some people who should be voted. That's the question. Um, I don't really. Um, should we dissolve the debt? Get rid of it. No. Why not? Why not? Okay, I like that. And press the button. Um, yes. I think that's like I said no. But if you go out and kill one of the people, I'm like you. That's fine. Uh, you know, I'm trying to say things wrong, but most crimes, it should be used often, at all. But like, there's some crimes, and I think you do it like, they just deserve to die. They deserve to die. Okay. I like it. I don't like that. But I like what you answer. <laughs> I'm happy you answer. It makes me feel good. Pass the button. I think it's complicated because <laughs> what would, like, for example, if someone committed something that somebody saw fit as a death penalty, but would it? Like, would it be more detrimental to them if you just put them in prison for life and they suffer the rest of their life? Like, what about the economic impact? The weight of it. Every year, one death row inmate costs the U.S. government $30,000 a year. As a concept, we should keep it because we have the Eighth Amendment which should protect people from getting for crimes. Because it, it would be an unfair punishment for something like fraud. So, you, so you're saying like cruel and unusual punishment. We, we protect these individuals. So they should be okay based off the Eighth Amendment. But if they're on death row, they deserve it. With the Eighth Amendment, that would be yes, if the crime is. If the death penalty is a crime, it's like murder. Okay. It might be a bit controversial, but I'd say um, to those of you who, just a question to those of you who say we should keep the death penalty. If you were given a gun and an inmate and told that they deserve to die, and told what they did, and by those standards they deserve to die, would you shoot them? Press the button. No, I don't think that's what kind of the Greek philosopher Ben Daniel said. I don't believe that we should. I, no, I do believe we should stop the death penalty. And if Batman is supposed to be a superhero and is supposed to be the. Of 
all good, then justice. Yeah, exactly. Be a <laughs> then why shouldn't the implicit and human be a community of justice and say that, um, that you should be able to kill someone? Okay. Last part. Um, I think that we should have divided it because, first of all, it's kind of really hard to get out. I remember uh, listening to a case actually about um, a serial killer. And even though they had hardcore evidence of him murdering two people, he got on a life sentence twice. And then when they finally got out of the death penalty again, he still had like three child people who actually was killed. And I think that. Um, when we have serial killers and mass murderers of people who have committed uh, previous crimes against other citizens and have kept doing it, then uh, the only way to protect the people and is to The crime fits the function. We post another question. I actually had a debate with Mr. Ball about this for the debate team a couple of years ago, and I failed miserably. I failed miserably because he posted one sentence to me, and it destroyed my whole epitome of what I thought was like. Would you ever rape a rapist? The crime fits the punishment. You kill a murderer, would you rape a rapist? I mean, putting them in our prison system, we have now is kind of just. <laughs> I could just see your brains explode right now. That's the greatest feeling as a teacher. I think it's a bit of a different case uh, because um, for murder, and most of the cases are the death penalty, they're more like they've done several things. Like it's a repeated thing, and you get to keep them in the prison system. Where they could, where they could kind of uh, keep up the violence, or and or just make good thing and maybe try and get out early and then continue killing more people. For rapists, it's a bit different because um, we, uh, for the death penalty, you're killing them so that they can't hurt any other people or kill any more innocents. Uh, for rapists. They have harmed somebody else, and instead, like it's easier for us to put them away so that they can't harm more people. It's not they're not killing people, but they're putting them away so that they're not harming anyone. Yes, okay. You can pass it up. So, I know this might be weird, but in essence, with the current system we have right now and the culture within prisons we have, wouldn't it be in, in, imprisoning rapists basically be doing what you're saying, which is raping rapists with the prison system? They're in their separate wing most of the time. Rapists on their own? Oh, okay. But how does the, um, the rape, the, sorry, rape rate is much higher in prison systems? Like outside. I don't look up that data, but maybe. <laughs> That's just something I don't Google, buddy. <laughs> I'm just saying. I get it. I get it. Pass the buck. Pass the buck. So long. Uh, as Yanni once said, an eye for an eye makes the whole world thing. So that's why I think we should murder a murderer or a rapist. You can be in the What? That's the book. Eye for an eye makes all of life and death doesn't work because if my eye, if I only have one eye, I can still see it. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I don't agree with that. <laughs> We are getting way too deep on this Well, I had this conversation with my parents like two weekends ago. 
And it basically all came down to who would decide on your punishment. Because, like, as we can see, everyone has a different opinion on whether the death penalty should or shouldn't. So, like, if it was, who would decide whether that person gets it or not? I like that. I like that. I'm going to write a number up on the board and then I'll be done because I think we're almost on the class. I don't know what time to get out. 90%. You guys know what 90% is? Okay. What'd you say? 90% is the average conviction rate of district attorneys. Ninety percent of all of their cases are convictions. Meaning they they won ninety percent. If you are not above ninety percent as a district attorney, you think you're going to get your job, hold your job, be reelected, do those things? But ninety percent of all criminals get. You made that comment, it's up to that individual to make that judgment, right? What about that police officer arresting a 16-year-old African-American? Because he fits the profile of the murderer. But that individual, because they could be flawed, because men are inherently evil, arrest him, district attorney gets the case, they build a case on this individual, it's circumstantial evidence, and they don't know if they're going to win or not, but they pressure that 16-year-old boy to plead guilty because they say, I will give you, if you get found guilty, you're going to get life in prison. Or if you plead yes, you're going to get 10 years. Even if that individual didn't commit that crime. He's a 16-year-old boy that's scared. Why? Because we live in a system of racism. We live in a system of hate in the United States. Men are inherently evil. Ideas are inherently evil, and judgments can be wrong or right. It's based on that individual. Does that 90% look so good? Okay. Okay. People that are on death row, they can look at it. 90% conviction, maybe. Would you murder someone that you don't know for sure? Would we put to death someone that we don't know actually can murder them? Economically, it's expensive. If we get rid of the death penalty and we have these individuals that have been convicted of heinous crimes that receive the death penalty, we keep them in jail, life sentence, we just get more and more and more and more. The United States incarcerates more people than the top two countries below it combined. Would you pay to keep someone in prison? That's all I have for today. Make sure to set your Chromebooks down. Have a great day. Yeah. Go, actually, leave them open. I'm going to go through and spray them all. Yeah. I'm going to go through and sanitize more. Have a great day, guys. You too, thank you. Oh, my God. 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 O